Steelers fans, welcome to another episode of the Call Sheet Breakdowns. This is Kevin Smith on our SCN YouTube channel, bringing you a special breakdown today, the first of actually several that we're going to do on the offense of Pittsburgh new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith. We're going to break down in today's episode the run game, Arthur Smith's run game, what we might expect him to bring to Pittsburgh, what that could look like. And in subsequent episodes, we'll break down his passing game and his play calling. Really take a deep dive on Arthur Smith here as the Steelers get their man. Whether or not he becomes the man that all Steelers fans will have wanted, it remains to be seen. But man, we're going to dive in and, and give you guys a pretty good idea of what to expect. All right, some quick background on Arthur Smith, former offensive lineman at the University of North Carolina. He actually broke into the NFL back in 2004 with the Washington Redskins and then bounced around in, in the college ranks for a little bit before landing in Tennessee in 2011. He was the longtime tight ends coach with the Titans from 2011 to 2018, worked pretty closely there with, with former Steeler O-line coach Mike Munchak, was elevated to the offensive coordinator position in Tennessee in 2019, uh, served in that role for a couple of years where he was really successful. Tennessee put up some excellent offenses in those two years, especially in the run game. Parlayed that into a head coaching gig where he was hired by the Falcons, was the head coach there from 2021 to 2023. That didn't go as well and dismissed this past January after compiling a 21 and 30 career record. The Steelers snap him up with the hopes that he'll be able to recreate some of that power football uh, and that really efficient offense that he had when he was in Tennessee. Okay, so the focus in this breakdown is on Smith's run game. And we're going to go through some of just the basic staples of his, his offense. And we'll begin with the inside zone play. This is a play that all Steelers fans should recognize. Pittsburgh's been running this play for years now, right? And in the inside zone play, generally speaking, you got all the linemen flowing in one direction. In this instance, it's going to be an inside zone run to the right. And Atlanta's going to bring their H back across and kick out the backside edge, and the running back will look to hit it in in the A-gap, basically. Man, the dream for every offense coordinator is run the ball in the A-gap. And so you get a heavy, a heavy dose of inside zone stuff from Smith's offense in Atlanta. And again, that's something that Steelers fans have grown accustomed to seeing in Pittsburgh. The Steelers have been running the inside zone concept for years. Smith runs a good amount of the of the complement to inside zone, the major complement anyway, the outside zone play, kind of its companion play, which has a wider aiming point for the back. All the linemen are, are now looking to reach to a defensive lineman adjacent from where they're lined up specifically. The running back's got a wider aiming point. It's more of a, a C-gap, D-gap run. He can hit it up here. He can bounce it wide. Really, you're looking to, as an offensive lineman, get to the outside shoulder of the line, the defensive lineman to your play side. The Steelers ran a ton of outside zone stuff in 2022, a little bit less in 2023, especially after they changed coordinators, the new coordinators, uh, Mike Sullivan and Eddie Faulkner did not run as much outside zone. They kind of ran a little bit more power concepts. But the Falcons with with Bijan Robinson in particular, who you see carrying the ball here, really like the outside zone stretch concept. They they wanted to stretch defenses across the field and then gash them once the back found a vertical cut. We mentioned horizontal stretches, and Smith liked to complement the straight outside zone play with an, with an outside zone toss concept, which you'll see here, starting with a nice little little crack block down on the, the edge setter by, this is a wide receiver actually coming down to block the, the wide nine technique, and then obviously with the same outside zone scheme, all the linemen are going to work up here, and the fullback is actually going to lead out to kick the corner, and and they're going to toss the ball here to running back Tyler Algier. But it's the same basic concept as outside zone, right? Linemen all reach block in their adjacent gaps, and a little a little pin on the edge there again by the wide receiver. Great job by number 18 there, sealing the edge. 
to get Algier to the corner. And now the fullback, you're going to get a, a mismatch there on the edge as the fullback leads out to kick on the corner. Algier with a nice little cut, and he takes that one to the house. Steelers saw plenty of this outside zone toss concept this year. Oftentimes, they brought a wide receiver in motion to serve as the lead blocker. Here, Atlanta is using a fullback. Falcons ran a good amount of duo as well. If you've been listening to uh, my call sheet podcast or, or any of the breakdowns that I do, you'll know I love the duo play. I mean, duo looks a lot like inside zone with one big difference. The offense is going to leave the corner unblocked so that they can get a, a longer double team at the point of attack. On this play, you're going to watch this double here as the play side guard and tackle really stay on the, the three technique for the Indianapolis Colts. This corner out here, I'll just point to him because he's at the edge of the screen there, is left on block as everybody else kind of works down to the ball, right? And you'll see these guys come off late, as late as they possibly can onto that backside linebacker because the idea in duo is move that double team as long as you can, let the back hit it up in there. If it's got a bounce, so be it, and he'll go one-on-one -on -one with the corner. There aren't a whole lot of corners who love tackling in the NFL so the duo scheme says, you know, let's get the double at the point of attack and let's make that corner tackle. In this instance, hey, man, little tackle there. Not a, not a, not a thing of beauty. That's not going to go any, on any tackling teach tapes. Uh, but, but he does his job and he gets, this is Cordero Patterson, the third running back in Atlanta. The corner manages to get Patterson on the ground, but not till after he's made about eight yards. Watch that double team on the three tech by the guard and tackle. See them push him as, you know, three, four yards off the ball before they try to chip onto the linebacker. So duo, a nice power run, something the Steelers did a pretty good job running and Smith will definitely bring to Pittsburgh. So here's another concept Smith ran a decent amount of in Atlanta that we also saw in Pittsburgh. This is the Wham trap. And the idea on Wham is you're going to leave uh, one of the interior defensive linemen unblocked. In this instance, it's going to be this four-eye tackle. He's going to be unblocked as Atlanta's offensive tackle works around him and tries to climb to the linebacker. And the Falcons are going to Wham. That's why I call it Wham. They're basically just whamming into him. Uh, with a blocker, they're going to wham him with the fullback while everybody else kind of zones it to the play side here. I don't, I, I'll be honest, when you watch this play develop, I don't really understand why there's a wide aiming point for the running back. Usually the wham play will kind of hit up inside where the trap is, but this one hits a lot wider. So I don't really get this, this design to be quite honest with you, but the concept is, is something that should be familiar to Steelers fans. Steelers fans were using a lot of H-back wham. They were even bringing wide receivers in motion. We saw Allen Robinson in Pittsburgh this past year do a decent amount of trapping on the wham scheme. So again, uh, another concept that, that Smith ran in Atlanta that is familiar already to the Pittsburgh offense. All right, I know some of you guys out here are pretty astute scheme observers and so one thing you may have noticed so far no gap schemes man this has all been zone stuff it's all been full flow zone blocking inside outside zone the duo play wham's got a little bit of a cross action but all the all the alignment are working in the same direction i mean here, here's here's about one of the only pin and pull plays or gap schemes i could find this is a pin and pull sweep i pulled all the run plays from uh, Atlanta's games in week 15 against the Carolina Panthers and week 16 against the Colts. And again, man, in, in all those games, I can only find one gap run and this is it. It's a pin and pull sweep, tight end, blocking down, tackle, pulling out and getting out onto the corner. And then everybody else kind of reaching up in here. Uh, and they're going to toss the ball out here to Bijan Robinson. Beautiful looking play here. Watch the left tackle get out and pull on this one. If you're Arthur Smith and you're watching Broderick Jones in Pittsburgh, uh, you're probably thinking, hey, man, this is a scheme we can run, man. Let's take advantage of that big guy's athleticism. Uh, nice little pin-pull scheme. You get the, the good down block to seal the edge and then the pull. Watch the path of the fullback here, right? Here's our fullback. I mean, I like the other thing I like about this is it's not totally full flow. He's actually going to kick the backside. And look at the effect that that has on number 45. The linebacker really holds the linebacker so he can't flow over the top real fast. Uh, and, and then he'll get caught up in the wash there. So again, man, nice overall scheme in the pin and pull. One of the few gap concepts that you see from Atlanta. Uh, I don't know if, you know, the Steelers really started to go a lot more to their gap schemes late in the season. So it'll be interesting to see if Smith incorporates more of these plays in Pittsburgh. All right, one more for you. Here's a concept the Steelers didn't run. 
Uh, and I don't expect to see them run it. I mean, this is this is some old zone read, right? This is some read option stuff with the fullback here leading up on the linebacker and this defensive end going unblocked. So as you're going to see the running back, right, take it take a downhill inside zone path here. The quarterback will open up and turn and face, and he's facing that defensive end. He's reading that end right there, uh, and in doing so. Uh, he's going to make a decision as to whether or not he needs to uh, pull the football, right, and and run with it, or if he's going to hand it, the ball off to the back and let the back hit up inside there. He decides here to to give it. You know, it's a nice game, man. They they wind up making six yards. I thought that Desmond Ritter could have ridden this a little bit longer to really hold that end, but you know, you can see the fullback getting downhill onto the linebacker and the conflict it creates for the end. Don't expect to see much of this in Pittsburgh with Kenny Pickett. I think that's a scheme Smith ran in Atlanta because he had an athletic QB in Ritter. So these are the schemes we can expect to see from Smith in Pittsburgh. And, you know, there's not not a lot new here. This is, again, stuff that the Steelers have been doing. So what's going to be different? Well, if we go back and we start to look at the formations that we're seeing here, the one thing that should jump out at you is personnel right? The personnel is where the big difference is going to be. The Steelers were an 11 personnel team under Matt Cannon. They got into some bigger personnel this past year. They increased their usage of 12 and 13 groupings with multiple tight ends on the field, but they still weren't that heavy in it. No team in the NFL did more of this, right? Put more tight ends and fullbacks, big guys on the field than the Falcons. They were the heaviest 12 personnel team in the league. And the one thing that you see in common as we run through all these, right? This was the, this was the first play we showed you inside zone, two tight ends, right? We go to the next play that I showed you. All right. Here, this is the, this is the outside zone run, right? What do we see again, right? Two tight ends. All right. If we go to the third play that we showed again, man, now we got, a, now we got a true fullback on the field, right? Here's 43, our fullback. Uh, when we go to the next one that I showed you again, something similar, right? You see the big guys this time they're in an unbalanced formation, the 12 personnel tight ends on the same side of the formation. And, you know, again, we can keep rolling through these and you're going to see similar things. There's your fullback, right? So I mean, obviously there are, there's a concerted effort by Smith to put big personnel on the field to get into big groupings, right? To try to sort of muscle teams. And obviously, if you're gonna do that, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna rely on these big guys, okay, on these, on these uh well, you know, we call them 12 or 21 personnel groupings, which include 12 uh two tight ends, 21, uh two two backs, the second back being a full back, or even 22, right? Two uh two backs and two tight ends. I'd expect to see a lot of that stuff from the Steelers, which logically means a much bigger role for guys like Darnell Washington and really Connor Hayward. Connor Hayward's the guy who I really expect to see his usage increase because of his versatility and how much I think Smith values that. Now, how good has Smith been as a play caller? Well, when you go back to his time in Tennessee, pretty darn good, man. You look up there, 2019, 2020 with the Titans, third in rushing, uh, sec second and third in rushing, fifth and 10th in scoring, first and second in the league in red zone touchdown percentage. That's a big deal. Obviously, those numbers fell off in Atlanta, specifically in the scoring and the red zone department. But the last two years, he still managed to have a top 10 rushing offense. Now, you look at the personnel. In Tennessee, he had... Ryan Tannehill as his quarterback. He had Derrick Henry as his running back. Some pretty good receivers and tight ends in Jonu Smith and A.J. Brown and Corey Davis. Very talented skill group there. Not quite as talented in Atlanta, the especially at the quarterback position between Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, Marcus Mariona. He was good at the running back spot, and he had some talented skill players at the receiver position. But it's going to be the quarterback, right? Let's underscore that because that's the theme for the offseason in Pittsburgh. It's going to be Smith's ability to get the most out of the quarterback that will define his success. Ryan Tannehill's best years as a pro came in Tennessee under Arthur Smith, and they were very good offenses. He didn't have nearly that kind of production from the quarterback position in Atlanta, and the offenses fell off. What will he get out of Kenny Pickett? We're going to look at more, more at that subject in our next breakdown. 
which will I'll, I'll dive in over the weekend and we'll have it up here on Monday, which will profile the, the passing game uh, in Atlanta under Smith, the use of play action and some of the things you might see him do in an effort to get Kenny Pickett where the Steelers need him to be. All right, this has been Kevin Smith for another call sheet breakdown. Take care, everybody.